Hi everyone, uh, so my name's Dratlo44, I hope you're having a fantastic day, afternoon or evening. Uh, so basically what I wanted to do today is to talk about uh, a few things that you should do to keep yourself alive longer in Apex Legends. Uh, a big thing is, is that you can't always do anything about it and sometimes fate is just not on your side and you're going to get killed no matter how good a player you are. But there are things, that mistakes that you can definitely cut out that would, of course, make it a lot, lot easier and a lot better to, uh, of course, give you that edge and that uh, way of winning. Uh, but do remember, of course, before I go into it, to never stop moving, never stop believing and stay apex. So what I am going to cover is just a few little things that you don't always think about within the game. Now, one of the big things is about healing. Sounds stupid, this one, uh, because, you know, you go healing. Yeah, I use a syringe, I use a shield cell, I use whatever I need to. I shield swap, which is uh, something I'll go into. Um, and these all seem relatively obvious, and they are. But do we honestly do them all the time? Now, I analyse actually a lot of the time my footage. I mean, I do put it on YouTube and stuff, but I watch back a lot of my footage and I can see things I did right and I go, oh, right, okay, and things I did wrong. What I'm doing in the background before looting a box, I'm straight away after a fight going into healing. A massive, massive thing. And I will definitely cover this a little bit further because it does make a difference in how quick you heal. And whether you use the directional presets or whether you use the menu, which I automatically do do quite a bit, to be honest. And it kind of goes from there. Uh, but one of the other things I will say before I go into that is just a little one that I thought was quite humorous uh, when I watched it back. And I thought, oh my god, did I really do that? Uh, making stupid mistakes. Easy one to do. So I flank round, I see an Octane, I kill him. Uh, kind of a big fight that we'd had, but managed to kill him. Now, the big thing is, is that the storm is now coming in. So, of course, uh, the lifeline's reviving uh, the Loba. I'm healing up, which is fine, and I shouldn't be using the directional. I should be just using up, uh, which is a lot quicker. You can set it, which I'll show you in a moment there, uh, for anyone who isn't sure or doesn't remember to use it, like me. Um, but in my infinite wisdom, uh, my teammates are dying in the storm. And I think, hey, it's a late storm in the game with three squads left, including us. I know because in um, dangerous as this mode was, I had a portable respawn beacon. I'd run in and try and rescue them. Uh, just look at the damage. I run without with my weapon equipped and yeah, I, I die, unfortunately. So yeah, uh, massive advice, do not be stupid like that because it is not worth dying for. Uh, late stage in the game, storms are going to rinse you and do a lot, a lot of damage. I think we all know this, but you know, we always try to be the team player, or a lot of us do, and sometimes it really doesn't pay off. Now, something I'm doing in the background then, so this is regarding healing. Uh, so I'm using an Evo shield, I'm using a flatline, and I am literally like getting it up to at least sort of purple uh, as regards to uh, the sort of like uh, the part. Now, of course, some of the shield is missing. Now, this is a kind of a situational thing where you go to, to heal. So I've set it now on the wheel. Now, if I go on the wheel and I actually then heal up in total, that actually takes about approximately nine seconds. Doesn't sound like long, does it? Nine seconds? Well, nine seconds is nothing, right? But in the terms of battle, when you're actually fighting people, that can make a hell of a difference. Now, something that uh, I then go and do is I drop my Evo shield. I then do the same thing again. And, of course, now I actually use the directional uh, up pressing up, um, like on the D-pad. And, of course, I guess mouse and keyboard would be a little bit different, but it heals. It takes six seconds. Absolutely crazy. And it really doesn't take that much time at all. Now, something that's uh, also um, a big thing is, is going into buildings. Um, unfortunately, buildings, uh, <laughs> they're not the best place sometimes. Yes, I don't know how that Octane survived. I absolutely pelted him uh, with, of course, uh, you know, uh, bullets. And, of course, sometimes you can put yourself into a bad position by being in the building. Great, I kill one of the players, try to, to heal again using uh, the wheel. Bad choice. And, of course, then what happens is we end up both getting killed because I didn't get to heal up properly. These are prime examples of just little things. So the next one, of course, then is reviving. Uh, so a good example is just exactly here. Uh, they didn't heal up or the person reviving didn't heal up. So what happens is, is that uh, another person like myself in that case comes running up and shoots them. And, of course, uh, then they, they die. So so before healing, reviving, do anything like that, 
always make sure that you revive your weapons. Yes, it, it may not matter if you've got hardly any health anyway, and then you get downed, but at least you can do some damage, and you can do your very, very best. Um, and a good example of reviving here, there, I was going to go for the revive on my friends. I realised that I can hear the revive down below, and I think, well, you know what? It's much better to kill these people first, and then go for the revive so I then of course uh, quickly loot the boxes I'll heal up and then I'll go for the revive so these are a big big key things uh, because you know in a lot of gunfights I, mean, I think the, the reality is is that a lot of people will have heard uh, the gunfire and the third party potential probably more so on Kings Canyon is massive uh, but of course on the other as, as well on World's Edge now finishes uh, the one that you're seeing in the background uh, finishes is a great way of healing shields now this is only a thing to do if you have got time uh, rather than of course uh, actually going through replenishing your shield it is a great way of getting full shield back uh, whatever color it is um, if it's white eh, it may not be worth it but if it's blue and above I would recommend it if you are able to get the chance I wouldn't always risk it uh, in this particular footage uh, I see the Bangalore I have a longbow because it's, it's still armed and dangerous footage um, and of course I go then for the finisher now this was a little bit risky but I did know that my teammates were of course uh, behind they were taking on the other player and I took the risk to uh, do that and of course it pays off on that occasion I would only ever recommend doing it when you know a hundred percent that of course it's definitely going to be the right thing to, to do um, so these are little mistakes that uh, of course you can make um, and all the rest of it now a big one always keep moving uh, I say it on never stop moving at the start of and end of my videos for a reason if you stand still you're an easy target and you're likely to be knocked down and then killed. Uh, my friend uh, GHD the Duke, who's a better player than me, always shoots to do damage and then repositions. He never stays still, making him a harder target to hit. He uses the cover around him and tries to avoid fighting out in the open. Now, I have tried to adapt that myself uh, in a way of using the cover using it to heal, using it to duck cover a shoot, then reposition. You've got to keep moving as much as you can. Yeah, sometimes when you're healing, sometimes when you're in a certain situation, you can't move and that's fine. But when you can, 90% of the time, 100% of the time if you can, you want to be moving about because you want to be the hardest target that you can be. Okay, so the last one is two mixed together, but let's face it, they may seem, seem extremely obvious, but let's be honest, we've all made this mistake once, twice okay I've lost count so firstly know the weapons and what ranges they are fine to fire from the hip and what ranges you need to aim down sights or ADS um, which is really good lose and also the recoil pattern with and without a stabilizer depending on the gun and lastly always pick your bite battles wisely it is a massive thing uh, you want to avoid running in all guns blazing at a three-man squad as you will lose a lot more than you'll win Always wait to wait your moment for when you are one of the enemy players, or for when one of the enemy players, shall I say, is uh, of course separate from the others, and aim to always do the damage first whilst they are distracted. But it's fly a long way in Apex, so remember you don't always need to be super close, and don't be afraid to swap weapons over relo reloading to down that player. And remember, don't first for the kill too much unless you know there's time. Trust me, in the past, I've gone for the kill for over continuing fighting, and it has ended badly. Now, I'm showing some examples of exactly uh, this uh, in the background here. So just repositioning, uh, keep moving, literally flanking round. Uh, you can see that, uh, you know, with the, the Revenant here, you can see that, okay, with the Mastiff, you know that you've got to, or you should know, that you have got to aim down sights. I literally um, go for a revive here. This was risky, and this was something that I should have checked out first. I then go for a finisher here to replenish my shield, but I know my two teammates are with me, and of course I'm safe to do so, or I've got a very good chance of being okay to do so. Um, I then quickly loot, which, okay, is fine. You know, I had a lot of health. This is in Armed Dangerous as well, so I know some of the footage is from this, but it was just some of it was so good that uh, it makes great examples for these kind of videos. And I've got no worries in using this kind of thing to try and highlight exactly what I'm trying to help you with and, and just trying to kind of help and, and things that I can learn myself as well I mean I'm not the the most amazing player I'm an okay player and I still got things to, to learn as well so I know myself that I can get only better and of course other players can as well uh, not all of us are the pro level I think this is a big big thing uh, you know we watch a lot of pros on uh, or high level players on YouTube which is great they do things that really very little other players can do but then realistically, the majority of us, I'd like to say, are either terrible 
average or decent. But decent is not like the high level players you expect. And we still all make mistakes. We're human at the end of the day. Let's face it, we've all done it. Uh, so you can see I repositioned using the portal. He didn't know I was there. Shot him using the, the Kraber. Job done. Now this is a, a fine example of repositioning and uh, you know literally kind of like not stopping moving, uh, repositioning, doing a bit of damage and so on. And of course uh, it pays off but it was touch and go to be quite honest. Now I do miss my sentinel shots. I realise I'm in a bad position. I go for the reload. I literally reposition as much as I can. Unfortunately the sentinel on a Mozambique at the time is my only gun which is horrific. Um, I then of course uh, jump down and actually I'm lucky enough to find at least an Evo 8 which is a very good shotgun and it was pretty good in uh, Armed and Dangerous. Um, I then go for the reload on the other gun uh, which is fine and I wait my moment uh, when they are just Distracted. Now they are pushing for that kill. They're thirsting for that kill, which, as I said, you shouldn't do. I literally managed to down one. I managed to down the second, and I'm in a good position. I haven't got body armor, and uh, one error I do make in a moment is, of course, trying to kick the door down. Wouldn't do this if they're waiting for you, because unfortunately, what I thought I could do is uh, move out of the way. It didn't. I use my ultimate. He pushes. He tries to punch me, and I have to go for some shots, and I managed to win out. But it was close, and it could have gone either way. One extra shot, I would have been dead. It's uh, horrific. Now, in this particular case, um, it's a one-on-one, -on -one, uh, or 2v1, actually. I realise, and uh, my friend realises that this guy is on his own, so we chase him down. We know we're safe to do so. We can't see another player. We, Of course, we're going to keep our distance. Just double-check and make absolutely sure there isn't a second player. Uh, we realise that this crypto is actually on his own, so he is, of course, an easier target. I say to my friend, go that way. I'll go this way, so we can try and pin him. Uh, he had actually run out of the building, unfortunately, so we didn't get to quite do that. But, of course, like I say, with the ranges, you can see that even though the recoil isn't perfect, you can see that, uh, of course, you can do some damage. And, you know, an R99 fires actually a lot further than you realise. So, you knowing the distances between the range and the hip fire and things is really, really important. Um, of course, uh, we realise then, I mean, you know, again, if you've got a good headset, it really does help uh, you play because, of course, you'll hear the sounds. You hear him going up on the jump tower. Uh, you have to fire a little bit ahead sometimes because of lag delay. Managed to shoot him down. Actually, he, the other teammate was alive, but the guy must have quit because he dies. We didn't even get to finish him off. Um, so look, that was pretty much uh, the main sort of pointers I wanted to cover as regards to this video. They're not all mistakes that you're going to, uh, you know, uh, cancel out. It, it takes time. It takes practice. It takes dedication. It depends on how much you truly want to play the game. Making decisions is always a key thing. We've all been there. We've made mistakes. We learn by them. Height position. Great example. I jumped down from my height position when I had a height advantage. And of course, I mean, okay, I managed to down the guy. But realistically, it was a little bit dodgy. And I use then the menu, which is something, a habit that I, I use and I don't use. I, I do it and I don't. It's a habit that for some reason I keep doing. I don't know why. So this is why I'm trying to say is nine seconds compared to six doesn't sound much. But it makes a huge, huge difference in terms of gameplay. Um, and climbing up high, I mean, I do do that at the end. And, of course, it wins out. So, look, if you like the video, you found it helpful and useful, drop me a like on the video. That would be much appreciated. Uh, if you want to subscribe for future content, as I say, I'll always be posting as many videos as I can. And if you want to uh, drop a comment, leave uh, anything else below to, to let me know what you thought of and any future video suggestions, then please do so. That would be amazing. But otherwise, just remember to never stop moving and never stop believing and stay apex. Otherwise, that is it for me. Cheers. Take care. Bye.